This is question number five. It says given that x is equal to sec squared 3y, where y is between 0 and pi by 6, in part a for two marks, find dx dy in terms of y. Okay, let's rewrite this. Let's write that x is equal to sec 3y squared. So I'm going to differentiate both sides of this equation with respect to y. So dx dy. We can use the chain rule here. So we multiply down by the power. We rewrite the inside function. We drop the power by 1 and multiply through by the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of sec y is sec y tan y. So the derivative of sec 3y will be 3 sec 3y tan 3y. When I ask to tidy this up, I'm going to just tidy it up and write that dx dy is going to be 2 times by 3, which is 6, sec 3y multiplied by sec 3y, which will give us sec squared 3y, multiplied by tan 3y. So that now is in its simplest form. We weren't asked to do that, and for two marks, you might want to leave it like that. OK, in part B, for four marks, it says hence show that dy by dx is 1 over 6x multiplied by x minus 1 to the half. OK, let's go back to x is equal to sec squared 3y. I'm going to use an identity, and I'm going to say that sec squared 3y is going to be equal to tan squared 3y plus 1. So we can say that sec squared 3y minus 1 is equal to tan squared 3y. So we could say now x, which is sec squared 3y, x minus 1 is going to be equal to tan squared 3y. Now, what we need is an expression for tan 3y. We've already got sec squared 3y, that's x. So what I can say then is x minus 1 to the power of 1 half is going to be equal to tan 3y. So that's one expression. So I've got this one just here, and I've got this one just here. We're now going to look at dy by dx. dy by dx is equal to 1 over dx dy. Therefore, in this case, we're going to have dy by dx is going to be 1 over my expression I've got here, which is 6 sec squared 3y tan 3y. So 6 sec squared 3y tan 3y. Just making the substitutions now, I can say from here that this is going to be equal to 1 over 6 lots of x, x minus 1 to the half as required. So using trig identities and using that dy by dx is 1 over dx dy, we can simply sub those values in and get the 4 marks. In part c for 4 marks, we're asked to find an expression for d2y by dx squared in terms of x. We're asked to give our answer in its simplest form. So what we need to do is differentiate this right here. So with this one, it looks a bit messy. I can think of lots of different approaches. Neither of them are going to be particularly kind. What we could do is write the following. We could write that dy by dx is going to be equal to 1, 6. Then we would have now x to the power of minus 1 multiplied by x minus 1 to the power now of minus one half. So this is one approach and we could use the product rule. Alternatively, we could see this as a quotient and deal with it as a quotient. I'm going to take it as a quotient. I'm looking at it thinking this is going to be the easier derivative, but in terms of manipulating it towards the end, I think that the quotient rule is going to be easier. So let's just remind ourselves of the quotient rule. If we have y is equal to u over v, where u and v are both functions of x, dy by dx is going to be equal to v du dx minus u dv dx all over v squared. So if we look at it in this particular form, we've got dy by dx here. So we need the second derivative. So what I want is an expression for d2y by dx squared. So let's start off. Now if we start with it just here, we can see now, and I'm going to take, I'm going to take the, the constant in this time. We certainly don't need to take that 1, 6, but you might want to. u is going to be equal to 1. du dx, which is going to help us out, will be equal to 0. I'm going to have now v. v is going to be equal to now 6x 
multiplied by x minus 1 to the power of 1 half. We need an expression for dv dx. Now I'm going to need to use the product rule here. So what I'm going to do is start down here with the product. So I'm moving away and I'll put a line under this of what I'm going to do. I'm going to treat this as a product. So what we're going to have then is if y is equal to u multiplied by v, where u and v are both functions of x, dy by dx will be equal to v du dx plus u dv dx. So taking this term, we're moving away now from the quotient and we're going to apply the product rule on this right here. So u is going to be 6x, du dx is going to be equal to 6. So as stated, we didn't need to take in that, um, that 6 if we didn't want to entirely up to us. v is going to be x minus 1 to the power of 1 half, dv by dx, the derivative, multiplying down by the power, dropping the power by 1, we're going to have, and I'm going to write this as 1 over 2, x minus 1 to the power of 1 half. Multiplying through by the derivative of the inside function is just multiplying by 1. This is essentially 1 half x to the minus 1 half. So what I can now do is write dv by dx. So all I need to do is multiply these two. So I'm going to get 6 lots of x minus 1 to the power of 1 half. And I need to add to it now the product of these two, which is going to give me plus, and we're going to have now 3x over x minus 1 to the power of 1 half. So as you can see, this is quite fiddly, okay? Now, now that I've done that bit, I can take it back to d2y by dx squared, where I've got my original quotient. So we multiply these two, and that's going to give me naught, which is really helpful. That's v du dx. Then I'm going to subtract away the product now of this 1 and the 6 x minus 1 to half plus 3x over x minus 1 to the half. So if I do that, what I'm going to have is the following. I've got 6 x minus 1 to the half, and then I've got plus 3x over x minus 1 to the half. So we end up with that. Now we need to put all of this over v squared. Now we know what v is. v is this term right here. So if I square that, I will get 36x squared, then x minus 1. Okay, at this stage, I'm going to write that d2y by dx squared... I'm going to now multiply through top and bottom by x minus 1 to the half, and I'm going to divide by 3. So what we're going to have then, if I divide by 3, if I divide this by 3, I'm going to have 2. Multiplying it by x minus 1 to half is going to give me that. Then what we're going to have, if I divide this by 3, I'm going to have 1. If I multiply through by x minus 1 to the half, I'm just going to have x. Now, if I do that in the denominator, I'm dividing by 3, so that's going to give me 12x squared, and multiplying through by x minus 1 to the half, that will give me x minus 1 to the power of 3 over 2. So we can say that d2y by dx squared, the second derivative, I'm going to have 3x minus 2, and we've got minus that, so we can say that's going to be 2 minus 3x, over now 12x squared, x minus 1 to the power of 3 over 2. So that now is in its simplest form, and that is quite a mess. Looking back at it, I think using the product rule with these two terms would probably be uh, slightly easier if you can manipulate it. So if we think about this, going back, we've got dy by dx is equal to 1 over 6. Then we have now here x to the minus 1 multiplied by, and all I'm going to do is take this x minus 1 to the minus half. So we've got x minus 1 to the minus 1 half. So if we saw this as a product, what we could do is say now that u is going to be equal to x minus 1, therefore du by dx is going to be minus x to the minus 2. We will take now v to be equal to x minus 1 to the power of minus 1 half, therefore the derivative dv by dx is going to be minus 1 half x to the minus 1, uh, sorry, x minus 1 to the minus 3 over 2, 
multiplied by 1. So we'd end up now with d, so let's write this here, we would have now d2y by dx squared, the second derivative, is going to be 1 over 6. We will have now the product of these two, which I could write now as minus 1 over x squared multiplied by x minus 1 to the half. Then what we're going to have now is minus, and this one right here, looks to now give me 1 over, then I'm going to have 2x and then x minus 1 to the power of 3 over 2. And then it's a case of dealing with that from there and getting it in that form. I just think with these uh, with these negative powers it makes the factoring slightly harder, um, but either way around you should, uh, you should get the same result. So if, if we look at that, if I did go ahead now, let's just have a go at just finishing this off. So we can see that the common denominator from here, in fact, if I take the minus out, it means taking the minus out, we're going to have pluses. The common denominator we can see is going to be x squared, and then, so let's write this in, we're going to have x squared, we're going to have 2, so it'll be 2x squared, then we're going to have x minus 1 to the 3 over 2. So what do I need to do to this side of a fraction? Well, I need to now go ahead and multiply that by two lots of, and just writing this out, two lots of x minus 1. And then this side, I'm going to now need to multiply that. We're missing on this one. We're going to have plus, and that's going to be plus x. So let's just check that works nicely. I'm just seeing if all of this works out. So we've got minus 1, 6. Then we're going to have now in the numerator, we've got 3x, so 3x minus 2 over 2x squared, x minus 1 to the 3 over 2, and that looks to give us exactly the same. Um, there we go. Yeah, it will give the same expression. I'm pretty confident that will. So you can see either way around, it's a messy, it's a messy derivative, whichever way you take it. Um, so there we go, 10 marks in total for question 5. There will be a lot of scope in the mark scheme. Again, you just need to tidy that up, multiplying through, um, make this 12. But that's, that's one way of looking at it. So either way around, there's 10 marks on offer.